Hi, good afternoon, good morning, good evening for everyone that's following the session uh, here in Puerto Madryn. Uh, we are here now with Matt Tricomi, Tricomi and David Carter, and they will present for you the talk uh, Geoplatform Fair Data Principles for Geospatial Data in the United States of America. So welcome, David and Matt. I uh, will add your presentation for uh, the screen. We have 30 minutes, including questions. So I encourage everyone that is uh, watching us to write your questions, uh, your comments uh, in Venulus, and we'll be ready for them later. later. So um, I'll start introducing Matt. Uh, Matt Tricomi. Uh, he is a Colorado-based architect for the National and Larger Data Program, for example, National Federal Civilian Data Programs or the State and Agents Programs in most Earth, mostly Earth Agencies Programs, Land Management, Earth Science, Energy Supply Chain, Transportation, Natural Hazards, and Health. So it's a few, Matt. Excellent. Well, thanks, Silvana, and buenas tardes, buenas tardes. Um, I just uh, am here to quickly introduce David Carter. Um, he is the Geospatial Information Officer for the U.S. Department of the Interior and also the uh, technical and vision sponsor for the national effort for what we call geoplatform.gov. So David's going to take us through how we're leveraging that to achieve findable, accessible, integratable, and reusable data services, assets, and much more uh, for the U.S. So, David, I'm going to go off camera and mute and turn it over to you. All right. Well, well, thank you, Matt. And Matt is here to help with any of these tough questions that we'll get later, I'm sure. <laughs> David, so, uh, we, need you, we need you to switch for the presentation mode. And um, let's see. Switch to the presentation mode. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can do that right here. Is yes. that working? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. okay, great. Well, thank you. All right. Well, just like Matt said, so I am David Carter, and I am the Geospatial Information Officer for the U.S. Department of the Interior. And we're here today to talk a little bit about the Geo Platform. So we wanted to start out with what is the problem that we're trying to solve with the Geo Platform? What is the whole purpose and what are we doing? So the, the U.S. government is composed of nearly 2 million employees. Obviously, not all of those people are geospatial people, but it just kind of gives you the scale of or the size and uh, just the general thought of how many people are involved with the U.S. federal government. So we've got uh, about 457 different agencies. Many of these agencies do create geospatial data. Now, as part of the U.S. federal government law, data.gov is supposed to be the library and repository you will, or not necessarily the repository, but the metadata registry of geospatial data. And we've got 176,000 data sets that are out there in data.gov. <clears throat> so if somebody is interested in using geospatial data, how do you figure out which data set are you going to use? And it takes an awful lot of time to start scrolling through data sets, just trying to find which one is the most appropriate for whatever map or data set you are trying to use. And ideally, which data sets out there are ready for you to use? Which ones can you go ahead and grab, drop into your application and start using? And that's where the geo platform really comes in. So the geo platform itself, it operates under the Geospatial Data Act. So the U.S. government has a law that says the geo platform will operate and be the geospatial uh, metadata repository for the federal government. So it's a shared service uh, amongst all the agencies in the federal government, and it's an it's really a library of metadata. And right now we've got over sixty three thousand data sets that can be found in the geo platform. And right now we are doing kind of a effort to concentrate on things that we are calling the NGDAs. So these are the National Geospatial Data Assets. 
And these are some very specific layers and data sets that have been called out. And we're doing a little bit of special handling in taking these through the metadata process and making those available in the GEO platform. We also have a number of applications and tools that are available. Uh, one of these is a imagery data manager. So it is a drone mapping application that's built upon open drone map. And that's where the federal government can start taking their data, um, dropping that into the application. And it provides some basic data services as well as provides an archiving service for the federal government. And all this is built and stored upon Amazon Web Services. So it is in the cloud, which helps uh, on a number of fronts. So making data fair. So we are defining fair as findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And like I mentioned before, right now, we are trying to concentrate a lot on these NGDA data sets. A lot of those will be found like in transportation. We've got imagery products, uh, hydrography products, and we're really working towards creating over 100 different data sets that are easily findable and ready to use. The GEO platform also is creating open source products. So in any cases where somebody is using or putting data out in a proprietary format, we are running it through a process to make sure that all the open standards are generated so that anybody has access to that data. And at the same time, we are making this data easy to view, just to double check that that is the data set you are interested in before you go ahead and start building it into your application. So as I mentioned, we've got hundreds of thousands of data sets that are out there. A uh, typical process of trying to just link up servers through a manual effort was not sustainable. And the law requires federal geospatial data sets to be registered in data.gov. So the geo platform team went ahead and developed an automated process to start harvesting data out of data.gov and have that being being brought in to the geo platform itself. So the other thing that we're doing is we're improving the discovery. Uh, you'll see a couple slides there on how it's easy it is to find its discover data. And then also doing that product generation for those specialized data sets. And, and most importantly, they're taking anything that is in a proprietary format and making that available in any of these open formats. So the, the big process of taking all these proprietary formats and putting them out in open formats is going through the GDAL pipeline. And this is just a little bit of a diagram here showing how that works, uh, what we're doing going through the process to make those available in the API, which I'll show you here in a second. So this is our redesign homepage. Uh, as you can see, we've got a nice, better look than those of you that have seen uh, for those of you that have seen the older version uh, the search is quite easy to use you can just start going ahead and putting in different uh, themes or uh, tag issues or whatever question you've got in there and you can start searching on that you can get see that there's an updated status on the bottom left we've got 186 data sets, uh, most of those being those NGDA data sets that I was mentioning before. And you can see the 63,477 metadata records that are available for uh, discovery here in the GEO platform. And it also gives you the, the latest date. You see the September 27th here is the day we pull the screenshot. Uh, just so you know that things are being updated and that this is current. So when you start typing in a search, uh, you'll get different options here available to you. Uh, so here we are saying, you know, we want to go ahead and find these data sets. And it starts giving you basic information and pulling the metadata and the title and all. So you can start refining your search. So you can start looking at the different topics 
Uh, these would be like any kind of keywords or something for data sets that you're very interested in. You can look for data sets that are in any specific formats. And you can start working through and narrowing down all of the data that's interesting to you. And this is this is really handy instead of going through the uh, the hundred and some thousand data sets that are over in data.gov. And once you find a specific data set that you are interested in, you can go ahead and select that. And this is where we're really taking all of the metadata that different agencies are putting together. We're making that in a little bit more readable format. So you can learn a little bit more about this data set. You can take a look at where it is, spatially on the, in the world, uh, what kind of themes and other tags are associated with this data set. So you kind of understand a little bit more about it. And then on anything that has been processed for the geo platform, you see there on the bottom, you see that, that green and black square showing that these are the different services and all that are available for you. So in, in moving towards the visualization side, we have been using Tile Garden to go ahead and pull in data sets so we can go ahead and process these and make these available at the specific Zoom levels so that we can bring them into our visualization services that we have in the Geo platform. And we are also making all these services available using the Geo server on our service catalog. So you can go directly to the Geo Server Service Catalog, find what you're interested in, and start selecting which format that you want to use this data. We have been developing a new uh, tool to visualize this data. So we're using Turia Map. And this is really just allows you to go ahead and selecting the data services that we've got available on the geo platform, you can start overlaying them onto this 3D globe viewer. And what I've got do done here is just pulled a couple of data sets here. So we've got uh, lightning strike data that we can put directly onto the map. Uh, we've got different uh, data sets that are available. And this is really just for a quick viewing of the data. You can take a look at it, make sure this is what you're interested in. Uh, if it answers your question using this viewer, that's great. Um, if not, you have a much better picture of this data set before you start doing any processing uh, or even downloading of this data set. Another part of the Geo platform that is currently being built out is an applications and demos section. So for a lot of these data sets that we have been processing, uh, and making available to people. We're also telling or educating people on how to go ahead and use this uh, data. So we've got different examples here. Uh, somebody can go into this section. You can start browsing uh, by interest and in what uh, tools you're going to use. And we have instructions and access to the code that you can build directly into whatever project you are working on. Uh, we've got uh, different examples here, uh, a lot of work with QGIS, uh, leaflet examples, Mapbox, uh, everything that is built out in the Geo platform. We've made the source code available for the different applications all available so that everybody can understand and duplicate anything that they want to do. And one of the final parts of the Geo platform is the community section. This is where we're trying to get people together uh, that have common geospatial themes, uh, data sets, and topics. Uh, this is a place for them to come together. They can start interacting with each other, share data sets, and really kind of build out just a community of practice around different topics. And this is, has started really around those uh, national geospatial data sets, the national geospatial data set assets layers, and, and really starting to grow into different communities on topics as well. And so this is a great place for people to come into, uh, kind of understand some of the best practices using these data sets. And again, just to kind of help build out whatever project people are working on. 
And that is really our update on the GEO platform. So if there are any questions, we're here to help answer. Hi, uh, it's great. I uh, think huge project. Uh, one comment that I have, it's the um, uh, uh, it's very interesting to integrate this data, open data platforms from governments that pop around everywhere with this uh, NSDI structure because sometimes they are. Um, created in different structure, different architectures. And I think all this harvesting and transforming and using open source is great. Uh, one question that I have, I don't know if uh, Matt can answer or you, it's about the, uh, uh, the future of the OGC API. If you are trying to, you are already thinking about, or for now you are just using Geo services such as WMS and WFS. I'll, I'll let Mac to, Matt speak to that one on there. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, we actually do have currently in our backlog of tasks to investigate which OGC APIs, because there's multiple, that yes. we're going to want to check and implement some reference implementations. Um, so there's the Open Map API, there's Open uh, layer API, and there's others that we're going to be looking to implement. We're also looking at PyGeo API as well, and just discover what is the best approach um, for us exposing in different OGC APIs. Um, I don't have, David, a hard schedule, I think, at this point for when we're doing that, uh, when we're going to release demos versus when it's going to become part of our product generation capability, but that is currently in our roadmap. And uh, this uh, tile server that you have, uh, it's vector tile or just raster tiles? Both. Yeah. Both. Uh, yeah. th that's great. I wonder uh, the problem uh, about the symbols. Like uh, mo a lot of people when they're publishing their data, they don't take a lot of consideration about the, the, the map symbols and mm -hmm. the, the, all these cartographic features. And uh, I, I, I don't know, but I think that it, this should be like a problem for you to generate the tiles when the original data producer just like put the data without thinking about the the symbols. I don't know if we have some, because one thing that uh, all the governance of this huge project must be very uh, difficult to like to put all the data producers in the same page, something yeah, like that. Yes. I don't know where. <clears throat> Yeah, that that has been been very difficult, and with some data sets, there the different symbology has very significant meanings, uh, and so that is a part that we have not quite worked out yet. Yeah. I am doing all the questions because uh, I still have. Yeah, uh, there is uh, some questions over here. Uh, people are asking: Is this data relevant or no? Sorry. Ah, is Tile Garden actively man maintained? Yeah, that, that, that is a good question. When we uh, did in, invoke using the Tile Garden uh, effort, that was one of the questions we did have about the open source nature of the Tile Garden uh, set of software. Um, we are definitely having to fork some aspects of it, and we are looking to figure out how we can participate and provide those improvements back to the project itself, but we've, we've been finding it's it's been working out pretty well for us in our environment to be able to generate those tiles. As we mentioned, we run it in a serverless environment so it can generate those tiles on the fly. We're also trying to figure out how we cache. Um, do we also use uh, Tippy Canoe as um, ways to uh, speed up some of the response time on the serving the tiles? Um, also, there was another neat feature that we've been looking at that Tile Guide didn't quite serve, but we are using, have been exploring Tippy Canoe on is how do you bring in when you generate tiles, someone has additional uh, attributes that they want to display, whether heat map or core plath or things like that. Um, we had a specific environmental project program that uh, David could talk to. If you think it's appropriate, David, that wanted to 
explore that. And so we generate the tiles. And additionally, then with Tippy Canoe, they add in their own attribution. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of a neat way where we do the core and then they can add their specific uh, Silvana, their symbology, like you were talking about and the way they want to present it. I don't know, David, if you want to add anything more to that as an example. Uh, well, th that's that's one of the things that we're trying to do with the geo platform in general is to to build out the basic core for people to bring their projects to it. Um, they can really start making use of, of the environment that's already set up in the data sets and to get them up and running pretty quickly. Um, so we, we've got a couple issue to, initiatives around, you know, like climate and justice, uh, all kinds of different you know things that come out of the government and good ideas and all we're helping to get them up and running quickly yeah i think this view of the communities and the use of data i think it's a, a main point for that because just you don't need uh, just to store a lot of data but to listen to the users and specific uses so i think all this community approach of you it's very interesting I uh, have uh, some more questions from the venue. Uh, have you had have you had to make any license agreements with data providers to convert the proprietary formats to open compatible compatible formats? About the licensing. Uh, well, that's one of the reasons that we're really using the open source software uh, is because it helps out with the licensing there. Um, so there's no licensing issues of taking the proprietary format and then manipulating it into the open formats. Okay. Uh, what, can you go over the distinction between your site and data.gov? Oh. Uh, it, it was the, the, all the presentation. But. Yeah, so, so data.gov is for all government data, not just geospatial data sets. Uh, and so that's that's the big difference is when you go to data.gov, you can find anything. Now, if you're looking for specifically data, geospatial data, that's where the geo platform is a much better place. Great. I have another question from Jeff Campbell. What was the most unexpected thing you discovered while creating the new geo platform? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say um, the most unexpected is probably how hard metadata can be. That's what I was going to say, David. How, yeah. how, how, how a common standard can be implemented multiple ways <laughs> and how hard it is to code around that. <laughs> yeah. The one thing we are working on related to that is we want to provide what we call metadata insights, where we can let the suppliers know some of the challenges they're uncovering uncovering to make things more findable. Uh, we could then create uh, an advisor of sorts that can let the supplier know if you publish the metadata in this way, or if you made uh, your cleaned up your metadata in this format, uh, it would increase what we call making the data more fair. So that's something we're looking at in 2022. And you're going to see that coming soon. Yeah, this uh, around here in Brazil is the same. We rely a lot in the in the data data producer to to make all this metadata, and there, there uh, maybe uh, one more last question by me. If you thought about using like intelligent agents or some kind of a new way of uh, try to not not use as much rely on as much in the human. Uh, pre uh, feeling all this metadata, you're already thinking about something about using like some kind of robot or something to to try to to help with that. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, that's definitely we're, we're something very interested in using. Um, how, how to make it much much easier and automate it yeah. more? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it is the weak link, I think, <laughs> well, because you have a human being and uh, and it's really diverse. It's a huge country with several agencies. And just check if you have another question. This, I, I don't think if I, if I understand the question, but is, is this data relevant or just for train, training? Well, it is real data, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is, yes. 
So, uh, no more questions. I think I want to congratulate. Uh, it's a huge effort. I, I think uh, being open source, thinking about open data, and thinking about the user, the uses, the communities, I, I think it's um, uh, the way for all black NSDIs or the wild to really not be like a huge storage of data, but uh, be something uh, to connect uh, the users with the uh, all the all things you can do with, with your spatial data. So thank you again, David and Carter, and David Carter and Matt Tricomi, and. Um, in five minutes, you have another session about map swipe and open source mobile web putting communities on the map. Okay. Thank you. All again. right. Well, thank you very much. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye.